This is the edit that I have made in this tutorial and no plugins were required. Start by making a product and then make a new sequence, so head up to File, New, Sequence, give it a name if you want to, just click OK, it doesn't matter which one you selected because we are going to change the settings. So if you just press OK and then head over to Sequence, Sequence Settings, copy my settings down. So Editing Mode should be Custom, Time Base should be 60 for the smoothest edit. Frame size can either be 1080 by 1440 or 1080 by 1920. 1920 usually fits a phone screen, but I think 1440 edits look a little better. So let's go 1440. Double check to make sure that your settings match mine. These ones don't really matter at the bottom, just these top three, then click OK. Grab your audio and add it onto the timeline. Now cut it down to your desired segment. Take a listen to my audio. And you can also see that I've added a small fade at the end, so all I did was change it to 12 seconds long. Next up, grab your clips, so I've got this Ronaldo scene pack. If you double click on the imported clips, it will come up with this like project. Click and drag this little icon which drags the video only without the audio onto your timeline. So just click and drag it onto your timeline like that. Then I recommend scaling this up because at the moment you can see we've got these black bars at the top and the bottom. You don't want to do that after cutting your clips because that will take a that will just that will just take longer. So do it now. Turn up the scale if you head over to effect controls, turn it up. Something like 135 is fine for me. Then of course, find your clips, really simple stuff. So this one looks good. I'm gonna make a cut and I'm just gonna cut it here. It does not have to be a specific length because we're going to make the adjustments later on anyway. In fact, I have actually already made one big mistake and that is not placing my markers on my audio. To put it short, I don't know how many clips I will need. So I'm going to listen to my audio and press M on my keyboard to place a marker each time we hear a beat. So somewhere around here right there i think wait for it yeah just there my headphones are a bit delayed so it might sound a bit off there was a beat at the beginning as well so i'm just going to place one there and just carry on so one there perfect make sure that your audio is not highlighted because if it's highlighted and you press m it's going to add the marker directly onto the audio So that's a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine markers. So I need nine clips. I'm going to find them. In fact, a few minutes ago, I did already prepare this. So these are my clips that I'm going to be using. Something I want to point out really quick is that these clips are for some reason in 60 frames per second, even though they aren't actually 60. So they have a lot of duplicate frames. So when we do interpolate it, it's going to look choppy. So let me just play it. So if we go one, to you can see there are two frames that are identical this step is somewhat optional but i do recommend it if you want even smoother clips so what you want to do is right click on your clip head over to nest and click ok then open up that nested sequence and you want to change the sequence frame rate so head over to sequence sequence settings change it down to about 30 then click ok and close out of that sequence then just repeat this with your other clips. I promise it's going to make so much more sense later on, but just keep doing this. Nest, OK, open it up, sequence, sequence settings, change it down to 30. However, if you are certain your clips are smooth and they look 60 frames per second and don't have any duplicate frames, then don't do this step. Now let's time remap these. So click on this, right click on this tiny box just here on the first clip, head over to time remapping and select speed. Then hold Alt on your keyboard and use the scroll wheel to expand this section or you can just click this little bar here and manually expand it like so. Something like this should be okay. And what you're gonna do is head one frame forward, hold control on your keyboard and click just there. That's going to place a keyframe, which we are going to extend. So what you want to do is just click and drag the right part all the way towards the middle, maybe like around here. We want the beginning to be fast and then gradually slow down as it reaches the middle and then speed back up as we reach the end. At the moment, the speed for our entire clip is 100%. So we want the beginning to be higher than that, which will speed it up. So if I just click and drag at the edge, so let me just zoom in. Um, unfortunately, I can't zoom in anymore, but if you just click and drag just behind this marker, keep dragging up until you hit, let's go maybe 300, that should be fast enough. It doesn't have to be perfect, so 300 is fine. Then I'm going to also extend this part all the way to the end, so we hit this marker. So if I just do that, okay, so it's not working. And the reason why is because our clip is too short. So you need to just open it up, so just double click on your sequence and extend it. That's all you need to do. Close out of it, and now it should work. There seems to already be a marker here, I'm not sure why, but we can use this. So if I just pull this one to the left, like so, and increase this one on the right, so this bar here, 
I just pull it up all the way to let's go maybe 300 once again extend it one more time and push this one to the right like so some of these markers aren't in sync with the audio but it's fine they're just there as a guide so I'm just going to extend it a bit further and pull this one like so perfect now it should hopefully look like this we need to make a few more adjustments so for example uh let's increase the length of this first one so i'm just going to pull this like that that one's being pulled backwards though so i'm just going to keep on fixing it up like so there you go just follow what i'm doing also we're going to smoothen these out so if you just click on one of these keyframes so if i just select this one and what i'm going to do is grab this handle and put it to the left very slightly so i don't want it to look like that that's going to be horrible just a little smooth so at an angle like that same goes for the other side but the other way so to the right instead so I feel like that is fine. Perfect. At the moment, it's not going to look smooth. And that's because we have not turned on the setting. That's going to be the very final step to prevent any lag. So let's move on to effects after I've time remapped my other clips. So my second one, time remapping speed that's selected and hold control, click and do that as well for the end. Drag the middle down like so. OK, that's kind of messed it up. So maybe it's best if I just do uh, focus on the first one first. So just increase that to like, yep. 300 ish that's fine open it up because i can't extend it so open it up extend it done extend it even more if you don't have a second keyframe just you can just add another one so if you just head to the end and then hold control click done extend that point extend that one too just here and then increase the percentage let's go even more let's go maybe like 350 sure why not issue number two wait did i run into issue number one i'm not sure but the second problem or the first one that i've just run into is the framing of the clip so if i were to move the position you, you can't even see him so what you need to do is just open up your nested sequence it doesn't matter if you do this before or after time remapping it wouldn't make a difference um, but just move the position to the center of your character or person i should probably do that for my other ones um maybe this one as well like so there you go now that that's over let me just show you the result Now let's make them smooth by highlighting all of our clips, right click, head over to speed slash duration and change the time interpolation to optical flow. Then nest all of the clips once again. So each one, right click, nest and select OK. If you play it back, it won't look smooth at all. You can see it's a bit choppy, but that's because we haven't rendered our edit. So once you do render or export your edit, which means to save your edit, it will look smooth, but you can double check by pressing I on your keyboard and then O at the end of a clip and then head over to sequence render into out and if you just play it back you can see it's very smooth this gives us a very quick preview of what it could look like at the end so let me just get rid of this let's close this layer and what we're going to do first is search for the gaussian blur effect we could add it to a clip directly but i think it's best if we use an adjustment layer so on your project tab right click anywhere head over to new item adjustment layer and click ok add it on top of your clip and extend it to about 5 10 15 20 25 frames long then add the blur effect directly onto the adjustment layer and if you head over to effect controls what you want to do is keyframe the blurriness at the beginning and let's set it to 200. Switch the blur dimensions to something like horizontal or vertical. I'm going to go with vertical for this edit, which is up and down. Horizontal is left and right. So vertical, it's his for this example. Head to the very end of your adjustment layer. So remember, 200 at the beginning. Keyframe is right there. Then what you want to do is head to the end, but one frame back from the adjustment layer and set the amount to zero. Right click on the second keyframe and select ease in. So now it should hopefully look like this. If you think it's too slow, then no problem. Just open up the graph, click on this little button here, this little arrow. And what you want to do is pull the handle for the second keyframe to the left like that. There you go. And maybe the first one a little lower like so. So just copy what I do. And this is the result. Now we need to make a shake. So if you head back into effects, search up transform and add it directly onto the adjustment layer once again. Set a keyframe for the scale to 115 all the way to the end, one frame back and reset this to 100. Then open up the graph and copy what I do. So grab the second keyframe, pull this handle all the way to the left, making sure it's on level. So not too high, not too low right there perfect it looks very smooth to make this part easier you can hide the blur effect so just click on this fx icon that's going to hide it and what we're going to do is now keyframe the position for the transform so just click this stopwatch make sure you're at the beginning what i'm going to do is move this second value down like so maybe just there at about one two three four frames ahead and then push it up making sure it hits the edge like right there so it's away from the center not that but here one two and then the same so 
all the way at the bottom and then one two three four reset this i'm going to highlight my last three keyframes and right click head over to temporal interpolation and select ease in turn the blur effect back on and this is what it should hopefully look like. Instead of using the transform effect, I'm actually going to grab my preset. This is from my shake and transition pack. You can see I've got a bunch of presets and I happen to have a vertical shake. So I'm going to add vertical shake one onto my adjustment layer. Let's do a before and after comparison. So before with just the blur effect and after with the shake, all I had to do was drag and drop. And this is the results. Look how smooth it looks. If I want a much more harder shake, I can go for vertical shake two. So if I just add that on, not bad at all so i think i'm going to go for the first one i think that looks pretty smooth so yeah that looks nice i'm also going to add on lumetri color so if i just search up lumetri the one underneath color correction now i know there is a tab for this but some people can't find it so i think it's easier to just search for it so just add this onto your adjustment layer open up the effect head over to basic correction so just click on the arrow and set a keyframe for the exposure at the beginning we're going to set it to hmm, let's see i think two looks good yeah, two at the beginning and then five, ten, maybe ten frames ahead. I'm not too sure. Let's reset this back to zero and see how it looks. So I'm just going to right click on this second keyframe and ease in. Let's see how that looks. Not bad at all. I could push it forwards a few frames. So maybe like here. How does that look? That looks much better, in fact. So I'm going to leave it at that and then I'm going to just close the effect. So click on this tiny arrow. There you go. I'm also going to push it up because I forgot to add on some effects that wouldn't really be possible on an adjustment layer. So what you want to do is duplicate your clip. So hold Alt on your keyboard and click and drag it up. Then add on the effect that we used before. So the Gaussian blur directly onto the duplicated layer. Head back into effect controls. And you want to turn this up to, let's go, maybe 20. Blending mode, change that to linear dodge add, I think. I'm not too sure. Let's change the blur dimension to vertical, though. Actually, I think horizontal looks better. Yeah, that looks okay. It looks a bit odd. So let's change the blending mode. Maybe something such as color dodge. Looks a bit too bright. So let me just turn down the opacity. Maybe increase the blurriness. That looks okay, I think. Yeah, this looks like a football edit. The ones that I have seen so far. I'm going to go with that for now. So 75 opacity, color dodge, and then 75%. Uh, sorry, 75 blur. I'm going to mass duplicate my other clips as well. So highlight them, hold alt, click and drag up. And I might be able to copy and paste all of these settings over so if i just hold control my keyboard select opacity and select the blur right click copy highlight all of my other clips the top ones and control v to paste them and there you go it worked now all that's left to do is to add these transitions over to my other one so let me just copy and paste this adjustment layer so again hold alt click and drag some of these are a bit too short so i'm gonna have to make some adjustments in a second let me just paste it to my other clips like that looks good so far in fact i think it should be okay if i just duplicate this onto my shorter layer and then maybe duplicate it again onto a new one just cut it down and place it like that it should be okay looks perfectly fine all right sorted i feel like there should be a transition at the end as well of each clip luckily i did just quickly prepare this for uh, by using my preset so i used my vertical shake preset and also what we just learned to reverse the process so this is what it looks I think it looks better without it anyway, but I may as well just copy and paste it over to my other one. So maybe like just every now and again, so it doesn't get boring. So yeah, this is the result. You can buy this project file in the description below, but if you're a monthly supporter, it's completely free. Thank you for watching. Peace.